Good morning, Woodruff Road Christian Church and families and friends and again, those of you that may have stumbled upon this video by accident on YouTube. Welcome! Glad you're here. So, it's Thursday, March 19th. We are um, technically day two into this experiment of videos and I uh, want to let you know that we have a microphone upgrade right here. I can't show you because, you know, that would break everything. Which is ironic, you know. Um, the one thing that the suggestion I got, it was all well, you know, good hearted and everything was, we can't hear you, Chris, on the videos, uh, turn up the volume, which I think is ironic because nobody has literally ever said that to me during a sermon. We can't hear you. Like I could be talking and, and halfway through my sermon and wouldn't know the difference. And you guys would be in the back like, should we tell him his mic's not on? No, it's cute how he thinks we, we can actually hear him. So, anyways, I hope the volume is better. Thank you, Brendan, for the for letting me use the uh, the mic uh, from your office. Uh, I sprayed it with bleach. I hope that's okay. I'm just kidding. I didn't really. I, I licked it. All of it. You may not want to use this microphone again. Anyways, let's talk about something serious. I'm sorry, I'm trying to bring a little humor and levity to the situation. I, I got to thinking last night uh, about the song, the Joni Mitchell song, uh, Big Yellow Taxi. Um, and if you're older than me or my age, you, you know that song. And, and really the, the, the line I think that most people remember is, don't it always seem to go? You don't know what you've got till it's gone. Um, they paved paradise and put up a parking lot. If you're about my age or younger, you know the Counting Crows uh, did a version of that song. And if you're younger than me at all, you don't know what good music is. So uh, look it up and find it out. It's a great song. But I got to thinking about church and how we are kind of missing it. Uh, missing that, that kind of that cornerstone, that piece of, of our identity, which identifies us as the church. We go to church. We, you know, we talk a lot about how it's not the building. It's not the building. It's the people. But the building is such a central location and such a central part of our identity that we don't know really what we've got now that it's gone. Not on the table. It's not an option for us. And I started to think about that. And I started to really chew on this idea of faith and Christianity and the purpose of the church and where we fit into that right now, right here, right now. And so I'm going to be in the book of Matthew today, uh, a couple places. Uh, the Sermon on the Mount will be our second destination, but the first is this. And this is a, not a pleasant uh, bit of reading here from the mouth of Jesus, from the words of Jesus here. Uh, this is Matthew chapter 15. I'm going to read the first mm, 10 or so verses. We'll see how it goes. Some Pharisees and teachers of religious law now arrived from Jerusalem to see Jesus. They asked him, why do your disciples disobey our age-old tradition? For they ignore our tradition of ceremonial hand-washing before they eat. Jesus replied, And why do you, by your traditions, violate the direct commandments of God? For instance, God says, Honor your father and mother, and anyone who speaks disrespectfully of father or mother must be put to death. Children, pay attention. But you say it's all right for people to say to their parents, Sorry, I can't help you, for I have vowed to give you give to God what I would have given to you. In this way, you, you say they don't need to honor their parents. And so you cancel the word of God for the sake of your own tradition. You hypocrites! Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you, for he wrote, and here's where we want to camp out a few seconds, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship is a farce. For they teach man-made ideas as commandments from God. What are our hearts saying now in this period of unrest, in this period of fear? Are we saying, God, we, we don't trust you enough. We don't really believe. We, we don't know what to do. And yet... In every moment when we have this centralized gathering of church, we we declare things with our lips. We declare things out loud uh, about God's sovereignty, about God's honor, about God's place, about our trust in God, about our trust in, in Him and everything that He's created. 
what I think is going to come from this period of, let's call it unrest, call it fear, call it whatever you want with this pandemic, is maybe a new appreciation for church and what church is and what church can be. We have taken the building out of the equation. It's not a part of our identity in this moment. How are we going to live as the church? How are we going to back up all those things that we say and sing and confess to when we gather here with groups of other Christians? Are our hearts close to God? Are we drawing near to Him in this time of fear where we're surrounded by, well, just us? You know, in our families, in these little pockets of tension. And so I, I thought, we need a response to this. We need to know where it is we need to go. We need to know what we need to do. And so I want to stay in the Gospel of Matthew. And I, as my thoughts often do, I ran to the Sermon on the Mount. I went to Jesus' sermon, his big sermon and his his big thoughts. And I thought about this. This is Matthew 5, 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It'll be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. Are we salt right now? Are we salt in our neighborhoods? Are we salt in our homes? Are we salt when we don't have the church building or that church identity to say it for us? Verse 14, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Now is the time more than ever for us, Woodruff Road Christian Church, to be the church. To be exactly what this world needs. To put our hearts into it. So it's not just words coming out of our mouth. It's not just something we do on Sunday morning. So it's not just something we do because it's conveniently scheduled or because it's become a habit. But because we are the church, we are the body of Christ. And we will, even in this time of fear and tension, be salt and light. It's good to see you again, proverbially speaking. Um, we'll get together soon.